Now at 210 pounds, this Remington Warhawk in 0.22 and sub 12 foot pound is actually pretty good value for money. And here's why. Hello and welcome to the Gun Locker. Now in front of me is the Remington Warhawk in .22 and it's sub 12 foot pound. It's also a spring piston air rifle, not a gas ram, a spring piston. Um, what I'd like to do with this review is run through the tech specs and then show you footage of me shooting the rifle outside at 30 meters and then come back inside and rate the rifle for accuracy and performance and design and build. So let's start off with the tech specs and a little bit of history about Remington. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to read this bit to you because there's quite a bit to it and it's interesting. It concerns Remington and who owns the company or subdivisions of it now. So this information that I'm about to read has been taken from Wikipedia um, to credit them. Uh, but I, I do think it's worth you know, mentioning so you get an understanding as to what it is that you're actually buying if you go ahead and buy this rifle. So here goes. Remington Outdoor Company was an American firearms manufacturer and holding company. The company had notable brands under its umbrella such as Bushmaster, DPMS, Remington and Marlin. Um, now back in uh, 2018, March of 2018, Remington filed for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, having accumulated over $950 million in debt. Remington um, excited bankruptcy in May, less than two months after filing for protection under Channel 11 laws. Remington's quick exit from bankruptcy was due to a pre-approved restructuring plan that was supported by 95, sorry, 97% of its creditors. On July 28, 2020, it filed again for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. In the bankruptcy auction in September 2020, Remington was sold in parts to Vista Outdoor that took on the Lenoke ammunition business and certain intellectual property. Roundhill Group took on the non-Marlin firearms business. Sierra Bullets took on the Barnes ammunition business, Sturm, Ruger & Co, the Marlin firearms business, JJE Capital Holdings, the DPMS, H&R, Storm Lake, AAC and Parker Brands. Franklin Armory took on the Bushmaster brand and some related assets. And then Sportsman's Warehouse um, took on the Tapco brands and Dakota Arms, Parkwest Arms. So, as you can see there, it's been chopped up uh, and there's a number of companies that have taken it on. Now, interestingly, on the back of the very nicely printed box that this air rifle is supplied in, it says, now let me just read this bit here, designed and distributed to the UK trade by sports marketing trademark SMK. And that's of Commerce Way, Whitehall Road, Industrial Estate, Colchester, Essex. And then it says, copyright 2013 RA brand, LLC, Remington, and the colour green are trademarks of RA brands, LLC. Now, from what I can gather, that's actually a Chinese company. So what you see here is a Chinese air rifle. Um, if I am mistaken, please let me know. I have spoken to a few people and I've done some research and that's as much as I can find out. If it's any different, again, you know, drop me a comment please because I, I would like to know. 
So let's talk about the specs. Well, as I mentioned in the intro, this rifle is available for sale for £210 new. Um, you can purchase this particular gun from Guns R Us in Sheffield and I want to give a massive shout out to Mark there who's actually lent us this rifle for review so thanks very much Mark. Um, as you can see it's a traditional style spring piston under lever. It's available in .177 and .22 calibers, this is the .22. And its total length is 1140 millimeters or 44.88 inches so it is actually quite a long rifle and the center of balance from the butt is 575 millimeters so it's roughly here uh, yeah it's, it's roughly about there where my, where my finger is um, when you shoulder this rifle it actually feels a little bit front heavy but I'll come more you know I'll talk more about that in the rating section after I've shown you the footage of me shooting it. The reach from the butt to the trigger is 375 millimeters or 14.7 inches and its weight unscoped is 3.76 kilograms or 8.29 pounds. As you can see the stock is one piece and it's a thumb hole stock. It's made from beech, it's very nicely shaped um, and with regards to colours this is you know this is what you get, it's a natural wood finish. Um, the butt pad itself is as you can probably see there that's solid rubber and it's fixed. The butt you can see there's a swell on both sides makes this ambidextrous the cheek piece is obviously fixed and the grip handing again is ambidextrous um, so I'm not sure whether you can pick that up but whether you're a right handed shooter or a left handed shooter it's exactly the same and with regards to that uh, grip, you can shoot it with both a wraparound style and a thumbs up position because there is a very nice ledge here that you can rest your thumb on. It's, it's quite well shaped to be honest, so if you wanted to shoot thumbs up, it's not a problem. Let me put that back. Um, obviously as you can see the forend is slightly shaped leaning towards the schnabel uh, design where it's slightly scalloped as it you know towards the forend there um, it's both the pistol grip and the forend has got very nice checkering to it you know for the price um, it's actually very nicely done I, I have to say that it is and with regards to attachments such, such as sling studs, um, there's, there's nothing on this rifle, it's just what you see is what you get. But don't forget, it's only £210. And there's a little bonus with that, but I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. So the chassis is made from steel, it's very nicely blued, um, and it's black. There are no other colour options with this. With regards to the trigger, it um, is a standard blade um, made from metal. The guard, trigger guard, is made from metal as well. Um, and the safety, which is manual, um, is actually within the trigger guard. Now, I, I really kind of don't like that. You, you guys, if you've seen my previous uh, reviews, you'll know that I like safeties to be well away from the trigger but it's there. Now the one thing that I don't like about this um, safety is that it's quite a small blade but again I'll talk to you about that later on when I when I discuss design and build and I rate the rifle. Behind the trigger there is an anti-bear trap mechanism so that when you cock the rifle you need to pull this blade back in order to release the lever so that it can go back into place and shut the uh, bear trap, sorry, the, the breech, the loading port. Get my teeth in. <laughs> um, 
Obviously it's single shot, so there's no rosary magazine or anything like that. So as you cock the rifle, the loading port opens up, you feed the pellet into the, the breech, you close the um, loading port and then you take a shot. Now, although there's no rotary magazine, the advantage of that is obviously you don't run out of air. So, for many Springer shooters, that's a massive advantage. And again, you don't have to buy a supply of air or source of air by way of a hand pump or um, a diver's bottle or a compressor. You don't need any of that. Now, um, it doesn't come with um, open sights. It is actually um, railed for, sorry, it's, it's got a dovetail rail on top of the chassis um, and that dovetail rail is 140 millimeters long or 5.51 inches and the rail width is 11.58 millimeters or 0.46 of an inch. The offset of the rail to the top of the barrel is three millimeters or 0.12 inches and it comes without open sights because within the box you have let's see if i can open this up a three to nine by forty scope um, all within the price and that scope has got mounts so good hopefully that's not going to fall apart on me no it's not um, let's talk about the, bar the barrel so the barrel itself is button rifled it's 475 millimeters long or 18.70 inches the barrel wall thickness is 5.28 millimeters or 0.21 of an inch so it's a chunky barrel which is quite nice um, and it has an integral sound moderator again other, another nice feature. Look guys, we're talking about a rifle that's 210 pounds here. It includes the rifle, the scope, and an integral moderator. Now obviously the scope that you see on top of the rifle, that's my scope, and when I do accuracy tests, I like to use my scope. It keeps things kind of more equal, um, and that's just, it's just a scope that I like to, to use. Um, what else can I tell you? Going back to that moderator, it's 200 millimeters long or 7.87 inches and it has a diameter of 25.72 millimeters or 1.01 inches. Um, if you look at the factory figures for the rifle and they actually have them printed on the box, where is it? There you go. Here it is. Um, it says that the rifle kicks out 12.02 foot pounds or 16.3 joules, and that's for both the 0.177 and the 2.2 versions. Um, with regards to velocities, it's quoting 244 meters per second or 800 feet per second for the 0.177 and 183 meters per second or 600 feet per second for the 0.22. Now, again, I will confirm whether that's true or not with my tests that you'll see a little bit later on. Um, and finally, sundry items. So. Basically, it's packaged. When you when you buy the rifle, you're going to have it packaged in this cardboard box, as you can see. It comes with an instruction manual. It comes with a three to nine by forty scope with mounts. Okay, and it has that integral moderator. So that's a quick rundown of the technical specs on this rifle. Um, I'm going to show you the footage of me shooting it outside, and then we'll come back in and rate it. Okay, so now's the turn of the Remington Warhawk 0.22 sub 12 foot pound. It's an unbeliever Springer. Um, I've had a, a few shots, I'm not gonna lie, probably about 15, maybe 20 shots to sight it in. Um, what we're gonna do is a pellet test. We're gonna use a left hand piece of paper down there at 30 meters and we're going to put a group of five
pellets in each of the targets on that sheet of paper. So we're going to start off with the Air Arms Diablo fields. These are 16 grains and I've sighted the rifle in for those so we'll see how it performs and then we'll go ahead and do the RWS Super Domes, the JSB Match Diablo Exacts, um, some LRGs, so Bisley Long Range Golds and also we'll finish off with the Victory Shock, um, a nice budget pellet. So um, let's see whether it can put some PCPs to shame shall we? And again this is a budget rifle we are not talking a lot of money here so I put my own center point on uh, just to give it a fair chance yeah let's see how it performs so group of five shots in the bottom left hand target and to cock this basically you just release it from there drop it down make sure I don't lose the lid you feed the pellet in and now this has an anti bear trap mechanism so there's no way that handle can go without first pressing this lever behind the trigger back in that will release it and then it's also got an automatic safety so you have to pull this safety towards you and then it's ready to fire so bottom left hand target And remember with the pellet test it's all about grouping. Now that one did seem to fly high for me so I'm just going to see what happens now. Okay, that's a little bit lower. That was five, but I'm going to just put one more in because I do think that top shot, that first shot, was uh, a flyer. Okay, so that's the oops. Uh, that's the Air Arms Diablo Fields. Now let's try the RWS Super Dome. And we're going to go in the bottom right hand target. Now they fit into the breech a little easier. So let's see how it flies. Bottom right hand target. Okay, a bit right. But again, let's see what the group's like.
Yeah, this one's spreading them a little bit. Two more with this one, with the RWS Superdomes. I can say that it doesn't like these. Okay. So next up are the JSB Match Diablo Exacts. So we'll go centre target. Center target. This one. Three. Four, last shot. Five, that was lovely. Okay, well that's definitely a contender. Next up are the busy long range goals and we go top right hand target. Again, just a little bit easier in the breach to get this in. That's flying completely off. Well, let's see if it groups. Well, that's pellet and pellet. It's way off the... Um, Zeroing, but it's pellet in pellet, so let's uh, let's try again. Okay. It's funny how one shot can blow your thoughts straight out of the water. Yeah, 
I'm not going to bother anymore with those because that's rubbish. So last group is going to be the Victory Shocks and we'll try those. Top left hand target. Drop that one. Two more. Last one. Tell you what, it's grouping quite well with these, in all honesty. That was quite a tight group. Yeah, it's low as the, um, the target, but it's still a group. And that was with the Victory Shocks, so... Um, I think I'm going to go with the JSBs. Um, I'm just going to check my zeroing by aiming at the image of the five penny piece. I'll do that first, and then we'll do the accuracy test on the right hand piece of paper. So let's see if I can hit that. So we're aiming at the five penny piece. That's to the left of the centre target. Oh wow. Wow. Right, okay. Um, Let's go for the accuracy test. So I'm going to go with the JSP Match Diablo Exacts for the accuracy test. It's the right hand piece of paper. I'm going to put a shot in each of the outer targets and then I'll do a five shot group in the centre target. See if I can feed that pellet in. They feel a little bit tight. Okay. So bottom left hand target. Bottom right hand target. Top right hand target. Top 
top left hand target. That was a flyer. I'm going to redo that one because that's not fair. You always get the occasional. There we go, that's it. So, top left hand target. Odd. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, okay, so we're going to go for the group of five shots. On the centre target. That's one. Two. Three. Another flyer. Four. Five. Well, look, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, some obvious flyers and you can see that by the shooting but do you know what honestly um with some work on it some fine tuning yeah that, this this will put a few pcps to shame that's for sure i'm quite pleased with those results anyway i'll catch you inside so that was me shooting this rifle out at 30 meters and well you saw the results yourselves um Pellet fussy, it is a little bit. Um, it liked kind of when I'm looking at the groups here, it preferred three out of the five um, pellets. But yeah, that's that's not bad. And don't forget, this is brand new, so the the, the barrel hasn't been leaded in yet. Um, I think that will only improve with time. I did opt to go with the JSB. Um, exact jumbos for the accuracy test. Now, what I've got to say about these pellets, within this tin, there are a lot that are deformed. And when you see me do the accuracy test, you see that I'm going straight to the tin and I'm just picking up whatever comes into my hand. Now, obviously, if I notice that the skirt is warped or twisted or badly deformed, um, I'll throw that pellet. But for the most part, I feed it into the breech and I assume that, um, let's see if I can get this to stand up right, I assume that the force of the air behind the pellet will blow that skirt up within the barrel itself and help to centralise it as it runs down the twist. Um, now obviously 
there's a lot of people that say, and I have had recent comments saying that I should, you know, in, in all fairness, um, weigh and grade the pellets and clean them before I use them. Guys, if you've got time to do that, fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I haven't. I've got an awful lot to do. I've got a lot to go through. And in fairness, most people, when they buy an air rifle, unless they have got that time, they're just going to pick up a tin of pellets and they're going to shoot it, especially newcomers to the scene. Um, and with a lot of the other reviews that I've done as well, I've always done this, well, not with a lot of them, with all of the other reviews that I've done, I simply go to that tin, pick out the pellets, feed it into the, the barrel and shoot it. Uh, come what may. Um, what can I say? Well, you know, you saw you saw the results there. So with regards to pellet fussy, um, three out of the five pellets it liked. And then with regards to the actual accuracy test, well, it fared pretty well. You may have noticed that these targets have evolved with time. And what you can see, the yellow ring is actually a 25 millimeter diameter ring. So 12 and a half mil from the center of the cross to the outside of the ring. And this is at 30 meters. Um, that's comparable with a lot of the uh, FT targets that you get, okay? Um, so that's why I've put that yellow ring. The inner ring is actually 18 millimeters, which is the same diameter as a five penny piece. And when you look at these scores, the rifle has performed really well. Don't forget, it's 210 pounds. And yes, I've put my own scope on it. Um, I've not opened up the packaging on the new scope because it's not my rifle. If I look at the max distance from the cross, and I am, in, I am going to ignore these, you know, these three flyers that we've had on that accuracy test because, again, like I say, I just went to that tin, and that tin has got deformed pellets in it. Um, so if I ignore those two and I look at the max distance away from the centre of the Red Cross, it measures at 11.36 millimetres. Um, the nearest to the center of the cross was uh, 6.72 mil and then the group size in the center ignoring that obvious flyer from that point to that point was 26.54 mil. So overall for accuracy I've rated this rifle and that includes being pellet fussy or not I've rated this rifle 3.4 out of 5 stars. Now, when it comes to handling, um, it's 8.29 pounds in weight, so it's not particularly light. And for me, it feels front heavy. When you put it in the shoulder, it feels like it wants to tip a little bit. That balance is helped by having a scope, a decent chunky scope on the back end, because that weighs it down. Um, I guess for bench work, being front heavy, you know, it favours it. However, for field work, it's it's just a little bit off. So overall, for um, handling and balance, I've given it 2.8 out of 5 stars. It could be better. With regards to loading, obviously it's a single shot. So you're never going to run out of air, but each time you take that shot, you have to cock the rifle. Um, and the indexing was actually good. Depending on the pellets that you use, it can be a little bit tight and a little bit tricky to load uh, the pellet into the breech. And what I've done, you probably noticed on the uh, uh, accuracy test, the footage that I've got outside, I actually took, bear with me, I mean, I took the, sun, the sunshade off just to give me easier access to the loading port. Now with the Viarc HW77K, I didn't need to do that because I could get in there quite easy, but um, that has a slightly deeper loading port as opposed to this Remington. But you know, it's no hardship, no hardship at all. 
Um, so, let's talk about the trigger. Well, out of the trigger, and I haven't adjusted that, and to be fair, let me just double check. Yeah, there's, there's, it's not adjustable, so you're going with what you've got. Um, but saying that, it wasn't bad. You know, it's got a decent kind of, I mean, it's locked in now because it's got an automatic safety, but it's got a little bit of first stage travel, and when you come to that release point, and it takes a little bit of pressure, and it's gone, I reckon that'll ease up with time. Yeah, it wasn't particularly bad, so I scored it out of the box. I've scored it as uh, three out of five stars. The fact that it's not adjustable, well, that knocks that down quite a bit. Uh, predictable? Yes, it is. You know when it's going to release. So overall, 2.3 out of 5 stars. Not a great score because you can't adjust the trigger. Um, with regards to power, it's actually fared quite well. It's not kicking out 12 foot pound, that's for sure. Um, certainly didn't do that with the pellets that I was um, using to test it. Um, and I ended up using the Air Arms Diablo Fields for the test. They're 16 grain in weight. And when I ran uh, some shots over the Crony, the max or the fastest speed that I achieved was 540 feet per second, not the 600 feet per second that, you know, Remington or the Chinese manufacturer is claiming. And the slowest speed was 537 feet uh, per second, or 37.2 feet per second to be exact. So the spread actually was very good because it was only 2.8 feet per second over that shot string. Um, but it gave an overall power output of 10.31 foot-pounds or 13.98 joules. So it falls short of that 12 foot-pound market. Is it still effective, you know, at 10.31? Yes, it is. Could you use that for small game hunting, for plinking, uh, for bench work? Yes, you can. And as you saw with the accuracy test, if you check your pellets beforehand, then this is a pretty accurate rifle. It really is. So for power levels, I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, now, noise levels. Putting, uh, you know, or, or measuring the dBs at the muzzle, it was giving me a reading of 83 decibels. It's a springer, it's not a PCP, so a large proportion of the sound is coming from the main body of the rifle, not the muzzle end. 83 decibels, you know, that's not bad. When you consider that the majority of PCPs are moderated, are coming in at 86, 87 decibels. Um, so I've given it a score of three and a half out of five stars for that. And then finally, with regards to accuracy and performance, uh, and in particular value for money, well, have I scored it? Bear in mind, 210 pounds, that gets you the rifle, that gets you the scope, and it's moderated. All you need is a tin of pellets and you can go out and shoot this thing. Um, is it good value for money? Well, with these results, with taking a little bit of time, with allowing it to lead in, um, yeah, it really is. It scores 3.7 out of 5 stars. That's fantastic. Um, would I buy one if I was starting out? For me, it's a sensible starter. The Virac is, you know, the HW77 and the 97 or the TX200 from Air Arms. You know, they are brilliant rifles, but budget wise, six, seven hundred pounds. This is 210 pounds. Does it go up against the Crowl, you know, the N01? That's a brake barrel, um, most certainly. And, you know, it's, it's at a good price. So would I consider buying it if I were new to the scene? Yes, I would. I absolutely would. And I think I could hone my skills with this rifle. Um, so, yeah, yeah, for, you know, for this 
action in performance part. Um, overall, it's getting a score of 3.1 out of 5 stars. Well done, you know, well done to the, the Chinese company that have made this Remington Warhawk. So, let's talk about design and build. So for me, when we're talking about design and build, we're going to be looking at the aesthetics, the ergonomics, the build quality and the safety design. Let's talk about aesthetics. Well, actually, again, this is a, a, a truly personal opinion, but I like the look of this rifle. Um, I like it so much that I've given it four out of five stars. I think it's got some very nice shaping. Look at the stock. You know, it's it looks the part. There's no two ways about it. It does. And it's it's really nicely put together. The checkering on the uh, pistol, sorry, on, on the grip and also on the fore end is very nicely done. It's got some nice lines to it. The wood is, you know, it's beach, uh, but it's nicely finished. There are no sharp edges, anything like that. Um, yeah, everything everything fits nicely. I mean, if you look at the way the, the butt pad joins onto the wooden stock, it's nice and clean. The way the, the um, stock is fitted around the chassis, it's all nicely done. Yeah, what can I say? It's, it's for a, a budget rifle at 210 pounds, um, it looks the part, it really does. And if I was new to the game and I was looking to buy something like this, I'm sure it would attract me and I would want to I would want to buy it. I would. So four out of five stars are well deserved. With regards to ergonomics, now ergonomics again, sporting rifles are always going to struggle because they don't have the adaptability that's necessary to score high. Um, again, for me, ergonomics is all about how adaptable that product is for the end user and you know what that end user can do with it to make it feel more comfortable um, to suit that person better now because the stock is fixed so you don't have an adjustable cheek piece and um, you don't have an adjustable butt pad it doesn't have things like um, you know studs for slings or bipods there are no Picatinny rails on there, weaver rails on the fore end that allow you to fit a bipod or you know to put some LRGs on there or lights or anything like that. Um, it's 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 really not going to score high. But saying that, when I look at both the stock and the the metalwork or the chassis, I've given it um, between one and a half and two and a half stars for each of those. The fit on the other hand is for me is quite good because you know, I'm six foot and I've got fairly long arms. When I put the, the rifle to my shoulder, my cheek alignment, you know, my, my eye alignment with the scope just falls in straight away in line with that, you know, with the scope itself, um, for me, it fits nicely. It really does. Everything's in the right place. Feels good. Yeah, I've given it. Some may say generously, but I've given it four out of five stars for that. Ergonomics overall, two point seven out of five stars. Now, for build quality. Um, Across the board, so we're talking about the action, the chassis, uh, the barrel, the stock, and the sundry items, I'm giving it three and a half out of five stars. There's nothing here that really screams poor quality or high quality, it's just midway. The bluing on the barrel, on the chassis, on the underlever, it's good. The finish to the stock is good to the trigger, to the trigger guard itself. It's all good. Um, the one thing that I will say about it is that this lever feels as if it's got slightly too much play. I would have preferred that to have been tighter. Um, it just feels a little bit plasticky 
when it goes back into sorry I don't know if the camera can pick that up I'll do that again so this under under lever feels a little bit loose so that could be tightened up so that when you close it again it naturally finds its closed position and the catch just feels a little bit it's secure but it feels a bit nondescript it doesn't click in properly sharply um, it could probably misalign because of that waggle in the under lever so that's that's a little bit frustrating for me um, but hey I'm gonna go back to that price again 210 pound could I expect any more really no I couldn't I think I think it's good so for build quality having a good look at the gun not taking it out of its stock because I don't do that I've given it three and a half out of five stars and I think that's fair um, now the safety um, so I do have some issues with it I'm not sure I'm just thinking back to the intro with the tech specs I think I said that it was um, I'm not sure actually whether I mentioned that it was automatic or not you saw in the footage of me shooting outside that it I did say it was an automatic and it is an automatic safety which is great you know thumbs up for that fantastic but it is situated within the trigger guard I hate that and the fact that the uh, switch itself is very kind of short your finger could easily slip off of that um, and engage the trigger now if that failed for whatever reason you're into you know pressing onto that trigger am I being a little bit too hard on it possibly because it's an automatic safety it's you know as soon as you cock the rifle it goes into safe mode yeah maybe I am just overthinking it I don't know I don't know um, I would rather that safety be outside of the trigger guard it is, it's as simple as that and then you've got obviously the bear trap mechanism behind the trigger itself so once you cock the rifle you have to pull this lever in um, in order to be able to release that so that you can shut the cocking lever it's it's good it's nice that it says reassuring and I did off camera give it a good old go to see whether I could release that bear trap without using that switch and I couldn't so for me whilst I was using it, it you know it was safe it's as simple as that and I'm hoping that provided nobody messes about with that you know if they take the chassis out of the fore end and start messing about with the linkages all I can say is I hope that they don't but I can't see that failing for the time being I, I certainly didn't experience any of that at all so with regards to safety design I've given it three out of five stars it's okay I just wish it was outside and away from the trigger um, so overall for design and build the rifle scores 3.3 out of 5 stars and when you combine the two scores so uh, part one which is the accuracy and performance and part two design and build we come to an overall score of 3.2 out of 5 stars now if we go to the new leaderboard um, that I introduced last week you'll see that actually it's now pushed the muddy girl off the bottom of the leaderboard and it's joined the Rex Mex myth um, so does it put some PCPs to shame actually yeah it does it does right that's it guys that's this review over and done with for the Remington Warhawk in 0.22 sub 12 foot pound I hope you've enjoyed it please as always give us a thumbs up if you like the video share amongst your friends and family and importantly if you haven't done so can you please subscribe it's really important to get those numbers up and keep them up for the channel um, I really do want to carry on producing these videos but guys without your support I may not be able to so please 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 subscribe uh, for now until the next one please take care shoot safe and yeah bye for now